Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. What do you say we check out my new albino savannah monitor baby? Kind of funny. This happens every time I get a new animal. I get it. I'm super excited. I open it up. I'm like, oh my god, it's so cool. And then the nervousness happens. Same thing that happened with salt and pepper. You're like, oh, I hope it does well. This is definitely a little fragile baby. There's no doubt about it. But the truth is, is that monitor lizards are pretty good, and savannas in particular typically are pretty good animals. It's definitely small, smaller than I expected, but so far it looks pretty good. It's alert, its tongue is coming out, so uh, fingers crossed. I mean, I kind of took a big risk on this one to get it this young, but I think it's gonna do okay. We're gonna do everything we possibly can, so I'm pretty excited about it. And as for today, I mean, it's kind of just a normal day here. We've got a lot of maintenance to do. We've got some feeding to do, and I definitely have to collect some snake eggs, so even a normal mundane day here is pretty darn exciting. Okay, it's Wednesday. You guys know what that means. Every Wednesday we get over 150,000 mealworms. We get them in locally, funny enough. We unload them, put them in tubs, separate them, and uh, get ready to feed them off. So we do this every single Wednesday. They, they come in boxes just like this, nice and breathable. Got them in these mesh bags here. You can see there's quite a lot. So it's a little bit of a process. We're going to open them up here. And then all we do is we just dump these things out and they come in this, you know, packing paper, if you will. So we're going to come through and try not get too many out of the bucket. We're going to unpack this just like that. Throw them away, get them in, and just keep going over and over again until we get them all unloaded. Just wrapped up the kids' presentation. That's always a lot of fun. Gonna check in with Andrea and see what's going on. What do you got going on today, Andrea? Hey, so right now I'm just feeding Toothless. Um, yeah, I'm doing some maintenance around here. Not much going on. Okay, so just like your normal feed, all that yep. type of stuff? Feed, okay. clean, all that. Okay, good. I'm actually gonna be feeding rodents later on today. So while you are working on this stuff, I'll go next door, thaw some rodents, and then we'll feed some snakes and stuff like that. You feed lizards, awesome. I'll feed snakes. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, guys, so a normal day at the Reptarium. Um, I'm here cleaning, changing waters, um, getting fruits and veggies for all the lizards and stuff. Then we do feeding the alligators and the baby chameleons, all the other chameleons, um, everything like that. Ready to start thawing for the Reptarium. I got my little thaw list. We've got to get the rodents in thaw and get them ready to feed. And unfortunately, this is kind of one of the little dirty secrets of keeping reptiles, I suppose, is that it's not something that like most people share, but yes, I have a freezer full of rodents that we go through. We feed so many animals. It's important to get frozen mice and rats as often as possible and keep fresh stock. This entire freezer, including a couple others that we have, we cycle through every four or five weeks, just to give you an idea. But regardless, you know, we keep them as organized as possible. Large rats, medium rats, mice, small rats, so on like that. So uh, it's not something that I necessarily share share often, but maybe I thought you guys would like to take a look. And you might notice that I have actually color-coded buckets. We have green buckets, we have blue buckets, and we have orange buckets. You obviously don't want to use the same bucket when you're dumping dirty water into a bucket like this and then thaw. So we want to make sure that we have the right color bucket. These are just for thawing rodents. They never get any waters in them, any dirty waters, anything else just for thawing rodents. That's a way to just kind of make sure you're not spreading any kind of bacteria around when you're servicing your animals. Back down in the dungeon with Kelsey. What do we got today, Kelsey? Today we have a banana spider that was bred to a banana lemon wax. Oh my gosh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Well, let's see what we got. That's cool. Of course, banana, you can get supers because it's a co-dominant and there's a whole bunch of other genes in there. So that's incredible. This is the first time I've ever had a female banana ever produce eggs. Doesn't look like she's the best mom in the world though. She's kind of got so many eggs, they're all over the place. So obviously we're going to have to candle those for sure. But uh, wow, they look good. Let's see what we have. All right, so obviously we've got the one here that'll be candled. Two, they'll be candled, although they both look like they're probably upright. You can see a little discoloration in here, which is typically what the embryo is. And then let's see what else she has under here. She's not a big girl and she had a really beautiful clutch. Good job, mom. All right, there we go. So not bad at all. We got 
two, four, six good eggs. And again, that was a banana spider to a... Banana lemon blast. Banana lemon blast. So there could be, you know, banana spinner blast, super banana, all kinds of different stuff. So that is awesome. So I'm gonna let Kelsey just handle these two eggs. And uh, that's all the pythons for today, right? Yep. All right, good. All right, tomorrow we'll meet again. And it's that time of the day to collect eggs. Really my favorite time, to be totally honest with you. There's just something about seeing a beautiful clutch of eggs that just makes me happy. And it's so cool to be in the season where almost every single day we're gonna be getting eggs. This is actually an Abbott's Oak Tea that's head for scaleless bred to a scaleless Abbott's Oak Tea. These guys are incredible. And of course they are just a line bred Oak Tea corn snake that has got beautiful black barring on them. And the scaleless stuff is hoo hoo doggy. It's absolutely incredible. As a matter of fact, I'll show you one right now. Here's the actual scaleless Abbott's Oak Tea right there. Oh my god. And that is the papa of this beautiful clutch right here. And I talked about how fertility was a little bit weak last year with my scaleless group. This is the outbred stuff that is either raised up by us or bought by force. And man, the fertility has been so much better. Let's take a look at how many eggs we've got. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen eggs. Oh my god. Seventeen good eggs. And again, half those animals should be scaleless. They'll all be Abbott's Oak Tea. Oh man, I'm so happy with this clutch. Next up, we have the exact same breeding, which is an Abbott's Oka Tea Het Scaleless, bred to a scaleless Abbott's Oka Tea. And let's see another beautiful clutch. Again, I had talked about this yesterday, how sometimes when a male starts having really good clutches, of course, that entire batch of females he bred is typically good. And this, again, is a good one. And this one is even a prettier Abbott's with that heavier black around the saddles for sure. Does look like we've got one little slug in there. And, oh, don't, 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 don't. Be careful, girl. Oh, got to be so careful for them not to roll those eggs around. We'll go ahead and pull all the sheds out of here. Like I always mentioned, we'll get water in with them and get these all set up. But let's look at this clutch really quick. Again, these eggs roll just a little bit, so I'm probably going to candle these ones right here. I'll put these aside really quick. Yep, it looks like these two roll. This is the one slug, but we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen good eggs in one slug. Again, on a roll. It's doing really well. Next up, we actually have a possible blood red. It looks like it definitely has some of the influence of blood red or diffuse, but it's not really so much, but it's a head scaleless. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I was just talking about how amazing the fertility was on our clutches. Well, this one, uh, not so much. And the thing that always gets you a little bit scared is that this male bred all these females with the red tags, meaning they're coming up to lay. We don't know if the female was at fault for these bad eggs or if this male is, because if the male is, then all these clutches are gonna be bad too. So we just have to wait to see what's going on but regardless take the shed out get some water in with her but literally this entire clutch is just no good we've got two four six eight ten twelve thirteen bad eggs not even one good egg in there so can't win them all still having a great year but definitely this clutch was a disappointment i've said it a million times you know bhb and any successful business is really only as good as its crew and i am so lucky to have such amazing people that work for us we actually have a new crew member she's been volunteering for a while she's now on the crew so we have to just make sure that she kind of fits right in with the rest of them. Hey Danny, what's up? Well, I've got some grip work for you to do today. What's going on? I need you to move the tubs from downstairs. They all need to go in the basement next door, the clean ones, not the dirty ones. And then I'm gonna need you to cut some paper for me. <laughs> Let's get her done. Yep, and then I'm probably gonna have to have you clean some tubs too. <laughs> yep, all right, yeah. <laughs> Let's hope this next clutch is a little better than the last clutch. Ironically enough, it's basically the same type of female, but it happens to be a different male. And sure enough, looks like, oh yeah, that's more like it. That is absolutely beautiful. And again, this one was actually marked a possible diffuse or blood red. Again, some traits, but probably not. Really, it's probably just a really pretty corn snake that is het for scaleless. And it was actually bred to this male right here, which is unbelievably beautiful. Oh my gosh, and this is his first clutch, so the fact that he has a bunch of fertile eggs is a great sign. Let's go ahead and take this girl off, see what she's got going on real gently. Good job, Mom, you did so good. Okay, girl, come on, come on, girl. Come on, girl. 
All right, she can get in here. Again, we'll get all this shed out. We'll get uh, some water in with her like always. And then let's go ahead and count how many eggs we've got. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 good eggs. Hey, I tell you what, after that last clutch, I'll take it. Last clutch of the day for colubrids happens to be a head silver queen, which is really just a line bred ghost corn snake. And she's actually bred to an annery scaleless corn snake. And again, a beautiful clutch of eggs right there. Take a look at that mountain of whites right there. That's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 good eggs. Mom looks absolutely incredible. I tell you, that's the other thing I'm super happy about. Not only are the animals looking really healthy, but we haven't had any egg binding yet this year, which is really something that does happen with colubrids, but she is not a happy mom at all right now. So I'm trying to get her out, not to stress her out too much. Come on, girl, let go. There you go, honey. We'll get your shed out, get you some water here, and all set. So there it is. Wraps up the Klubert eggs for the day. Definitely an absolutely incredible day. Yeah, we had one slug clutch, but a lot of really good eggs. Just from a sanity standpoint, things are so busy, we're trying to take some time whenever we can to enjoy life. So me and Laura are gonna get out of here, go walk Phoebe in the park for a little bit before coming back and feeding the snakes over at the Reptarium. So I am back for my little nature walk. I'm definitely energized, ready to feed some snakes. I think we're gonna get started with my girl Perdita. What do you guys think about that? Come on, girl. Whoa, someone's ready. Oh, you're okay, girl. Look at you. You're so sweet. Oh my gosh. What an absolute sweetheart. I mean, she just took it like a little baby. So it's time to feed the rest of the snakes at the Reptarium. Next up, my energetic boy, Ricky. Come on, buddy. Over here, bud. Whoa, shoot. Let's try that again. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, there it is. Fine. Whoo. Next up, my boy, Night Fury. Come on, buddy. Come on, bud. Come on, bud. There he goes. Good job, bud. He's always willing to eat. And of course, every time Sunrise smells food, she does one of these numbers where she climbs up right onto the glass. Remember, last time she knocked the glass right out, so I've got to be a little bit more careful this time. There you go, girl. There it is, sweetheart. Whew. Last week, the D. Alberts python just completely crushed a rat. I have no idea if it's gonna do it again this time. Oh, seems like it's ready. Oh yeah, definitely crushed it. And again, it kind of changed its mentality. It used to never strike and coil. As soon as I moved it into this cage, it's just completely become a monster. Honey continues to grow and so does the side of food that I'm feeding her now. She is just becoming a beast. Cannot wait till she gets bigger. Next up we have Casper. You guys know that he's like a spring. As soon as you put a rat from him, he bounces about five or six foot. Last time he almost got me in the face, so wish me luck. And that concludes the feeding portion of this vlog and the vlog itself. You guys be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.